Hello, this is Pastor David Stewart of Destiny Preparation Church, welcoming you to our program, Road to Destiny, brought to you by Destiny Preparation Church. Our church is located in Rochester on Lyle Avenue. It's 1405 Lyle Avenue, right across the street from McDonald's. Come down uh, Lyle, it's the only McDonald's. In between 390 and Mount Reed Boulevard, uh, you'll find McDonald's across the street and just come right on in and join us here for any of our services. This weekend, very special weekend, it's our men's weekend on Saturday and Sunday. Special things happening here. If you want to know all the details, give us a call and and we will get back to you. You can call us at 7891-DPC and we'll respond to you as quickly as we can uh, to that number and that contact. You can leave us a message. We will get back to you there. Now, I also want to um, invite you uh, to come because coming up also is the 31st of October, also known as Halloween. And uh, there are many things that people do on Halloween. But you know what? We like to give an alternative for the young people to do something because, you know, it's hard to tell all these kids, listen, don't worry about it, ignore all that candy and all those games and fun things that are happening. We want to make sure that our our saved children can have fun as well. So we want to set up an environment we call our Hallelujah Night. And so I invite you to come and bring your, your children to join us here for our Hallelujah Night. If you want to make sure you're in a safe environment and uh, they still get candy, you still get to have fun, uh, come and join us here at Destiny Preparation Church. All right, now I want to take you to the Word of God. This is something I think that's very important uh, because this is a word uh, to help people that are finding themselves for some reason just not, not uh, resolved, not not uh, complete, uh, finding yourself uh, lonely. You know, sometimes we don't even realize what it is. We can't even put a, a name on it or a word on it. But sometimes we're just lonely. We're just disconnected. We're isolated. And I want to share with you today the cure for loneliness. I pray that this is going to bless you. Listen, maybe it's not you. Maybe it's somebody else that you know that really needs to hear this word. I want to encourage you to share it. Please share it on Facebook. Listen, you may be watching on television right now and you can tell people of the times they can catch it this weekend. But in case they miss it, if you're a Facebook user, like our Facebook page, and from there you'll be able to share this message and other things along with seeing things happening at the church. I pray you'll help spread the word for the cure for loneliness this weekend. God bless you. Hope to see you in service real soon. God bless. Amen. I want to share with you, amen, today on the cure for loneliness. <laughs> Anybody here ever been lonely? Amen. Oh, we're in the right place then. Amen. Last week we talked about, amen, it's better together. Amen. And we wanted to see and share, amen, how God uses us and connects us up in such a way. Amen. And that we're, we're actually intended to be that way. We're made to be connected. There are things about us that really don't um, come to existence or come to light like they should until we get connected. Amen. You ever have something you had to put together like a train set and you have all the little different pieces? Amen. But it is not really useful until they're all connected. Sometimes you're doing wiring. Amen. We're doing some wiring work in here and you go and you think it's going to start and you hit something and nothing happens. Why? Because there's something along the way that's not connected. If, it's, if the circuit is not fully connected all the way, it's not going to work right. Right. And so we are effective, more effective when we are connected to each other. God made us that way. I want you to understand God made us that way. Look, look and tell somebody God made us to be connected. And so there are certain things in us that are only truly effective if we are truly connected to each other, amen. On the side, on the on on you know, on the on the, uh, on the side, we we can live, we can breathe, we can exist. But there's some things that will only fully come out of you when you become connected. But the society that we live in today really draws us more and more into isolation than ever before. It causes us to be more separated, more divided. And, and I, that word isolation is just so key today because there are so many of us that are living our lives in isolation in a lot of different ways. Sometimes we just feel like I'm just all by myself. And sometimes you can even be in the midst of a group and still feel 
all by yourself. Some people in church, sitting in the church still, all by yourself, surrounded by people. Our society is pushing us or directing us in a direction of isolation. And you think about all the different aspects of, that have changed in our community, in our society over the past 10, 20, 30, even 50 years that draws us more and more of that direction. We have isolated housing now. Amen. Our houses are, are more and more separated, divided out than ever before. And I'm talking again in comparison with, with years ago. Amen. We want bigger backyards. We want, amen, to be further away from everybody. We want the next person to be on the other hill. You know, <laughs> It used to be in old days, you know, that's the way it was. A little house on the prairie way down the road is my neighbor. But now we've con we concentrated, uh, concentrated closer and closer, but now we're going the other direction. I just want, I want everybody away from me. Amen. So the dream is to move out of the tight cities and into the suburbs where I have bigger houses and bigger separation. We want more space. Amen. Around us. It's, it's the mindset of the society. Amen. Everybody wants their own personal transportation. We don't, we may do public transportation, but we really prefer, amen, have our own car to go where we want to go, when we want to go. Not only do you want your own car for your family, you want your own car for you. You have your car. I have mine. You go where you need to go, when you need to go, and I'll go where I need to go. These kids grow up, we want to get them a car because Lord have mercy. You, I don't, hmm. I need to be able to do what I need to do. And the kids the same way. They need to want to go where they want to go. Amen. Communications are more impersonal now than they have ever been before. The style, the way we communicate is less, it has less and less true communication to it. I, I have conversations with my daughter by text message. And by the time it's over, I have no idea what we were just talking. No conclusion. What? Send her a message the other day. What about such and such? It's handled. What does that mean? What, what? Can't get a response. What does that mean? Can you call? Can we talk about this? Communications are less personal than ever before. We post out things. People post out things to and about people they don't even know. Saying all kind of stuff about somebody you've never even met. Amen. Because it's impersonal. Now people can say whatever they want to say. They go on, amen, online as some other person, some other name. And then they just act however they hmm, want to act at the time. Amen. Because it's not personal anymore. Amen. Whatever happened to having a good sit down conversation, talking to a person, amen, not even just on the phone, but where you can see their eyes and, and hear what they're saying and, and feel, amen, what they're, what they're feeling and watch their faces, amen, amen, we, we tease some time, amen, even in the church, you know, we want to have our business meeting, can we do it by phone, and we, and we have a conference call, I want to see what you look like when we talk about this. I want to know exactly what's going through your mind, amen, by what's going through your face, amen, <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Telling all the church business now. Hallelujah. It's become a it's a it's a society thing. Extended families are moving further and further apart. We used to be connected. You used to have grandma and auntie and, and uncle and this one. And that's what, you know, we were talking about the, the cost right now of child care. Amen. Back in the day, you didn't pay for child care. If you did, you paid for it by cooking somebody dinner. Amen. Or, or trading them something because it was either your, your family member that kept your child and, 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 and or it was your neighbor next door. Amen. Or the old grandma. Amen. Downstairs from you. Amen. Who kept your child and you didn't pay what you pay now because now you got to pay professional fees to people you've never even met and they've got to run a business. So you got to pay for their business. Amen. It's an entirely different society for good or bad. There may be good reasons, bad reasons. But I want you to understand that society has changed our connections and changed our associations. Amen. Friends and, and, and connections through texting and, and, and social media, amen, has changed everything. The infatuation with television and movie images and ideals that have changed our mindset of what reality is all about. Some people call them reality TV. <laughs> and, and, and sometimes we start thinking reality is real. 
And, and that's the way things are supposed to be. Amen. Television and movies have kind of set the trend. They say they're displaying where a society is going, but sometimes they are pushing society in a direction of acceptance of what was the extreme. That used to be, yes, it happened, but that was the extreme. But now they're making it become the accepted way of things. And so it's driving society, amen, into areas that we were not typically, amen, in before. It, there's a change that's happening throughout our society. And as I said earlier, even when we're together, it seems like we're alone. You can be, amen, mega churches today, amen, are full of people, don't even know each other. Barely talk to each other coming in and out. Have no accountability to each other. Amen. Because they don't even know who you are. If you saw them on the street, you wouldn't know. Oh, you go to that church? Don't I go to that church too. Really? <laughs> I never, I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't see you there. I didn't, I didn't know that was your church. Amen. That was my church. Amen. We are more disconnected than ever before. How can we be a body and we don't even know each other? Amen. We don't know how to pray together. We don't know how to reach out for each other. We don't know how to touch each other. We don't even know how to speak to each other. Amen. Even in the church, we don't speak. Not even, I'm not just talking about the grocery store. We walk past each other in the church, in and out the door. Amen. Before, amen, you even see anybody. We are disconnected like never before. Stores are becoming more and more automated. They don't even want to have you checking out at the counter anymore. You just go to the machine and do it yourself. I'm just, I've been there sometimes, especially at night. I don't, I don't be bothered. Just, just. Give me my stuff and let me go. Amen. The mindset of disconnection, amen, is more and more. Restaurants now got you paying your own thing. They don't, you don't need a waitress anymore. You just put, put in your order and it shows up and then you swipe your thing and you pay for it yourself. Totally disconnected. Y'all understand what I'm saying to you? Can you see what is happening here? On and on, we become, more, as the more technology we are getting, the less personally connected we become than ever before. We are disconnecting. We are isolating ourselves more and more and more, amen, seemingly each and every day, each and every year. But I want you to understand that God says it's not good for man to be alone. Those words, amen, are not just, amen, the words, amen, to Adam for the aspect of creation, but it's, an, it's, a, it's, it's a fundamental thing that he's sharing with him and a fundamental need that he is addressing. He says it's not good, Adam, for man to be alone in Genesis 2 and 18, amen, because man was designed. I want you to understand there are things in us that are designed in us, and we're not right if we're not aligned with how we were designed. Any tool that you have at home, when you try and use that tool outside of the way it was designed, you can predict that it's not necessarily going to be as effective as it should. Many times you will damage the tool because it's not designed for that. Anybody ever take a back side of a pair of scissors and try and use it as a hammer? Uh, <laughs> Some people, no, I guess, amen. Some of us, are, you know, you get desperate, amen. It's not designed for that. You try and take a, 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 a knife, amen, out of the drawer and use it as a screwdriver. You know, it's just me. <laughs> Sometimes you, you, you use things in ways that are not designed, and therefore they're not as effective, and if you're not careful, you'll damage the tool. There are things in our design that God has created in us, amen, and when we're walking or operating outside of how we're designed, amen, it's just not going to be as effective. Amen. The Bible tells us that we're created in the image of God. In other words, we are designed, amen, in a way to relate with things that God relates with in a unique way, unique from the rest of creation. We're designed in alignment with his personality. You don't understand things about you, amen, they don't just come from you, they came from God. God has a sense of humor. Let me not go there today. God has a sense of humor. God knows what it is to be frustrated. Oh, y'all know that one too. Amen. God can be happy. He can be disappointed. Amen. The personality aspects that we all experience is because they first came from God. Amen. God, amen, has a certain aspect of attitude. Amen. Which is bred into us. There are things about him that's in us. So God reveals in us and within our relationships things about himself. There are a lot of things we can understand of God by looking at what he has done in creating us and in creating the world. God made us to be his companion. When he says of man, it's not good for you to be alone. 
Understand that God knows this because he knows he didn't want to be alone. And he's the creator and owner of all things. He knows what it is to have a world full of stuff and still feel alone. Mm. Some of us have a world full of stuff, but we still feel alone. Amen. God says it's not good for you to be alone. So God made Eve to be Adam's companion. And Eve demonstrates to Adam what Adam is to God. Let me say that again. Eve demonstrates to Adam what Adam was to be to God. Our earthly relationships are designed to shadow our godly relationships. So many of the things that we see in the natural that are in the right, in their pure form, let me put that out there, in its pure form, it was designed to exemplify the relationship between us and God. Now, a lot of things along the way have been a little bit deteriorated. Amen. Sin has corrupted some things so that things that were intended to be this way purely, amen, have have shifted because of corruption of sin. But God designed the world. He designed the things of the world. He designed in particular our relationships to echo, amen, relationship that he desired to have with us. Amen. The Bible describes in the book of Ephesians, amen, things about the relationship of husband and wife. And I want you to understand when we see the concept of marriage, we see the concept not just of what is supposed to happen between a man and a woman, but what the relationship is supposed to be between God and man. God images to us, amen, what he desires in us by allowing us to live in that aspect of relationship in the natural. Many times we think about uh, uh, husbands and wives as just being the physical relationship, amen, but there is a natural, there's a spiritual relationship as well that exemplifies, amen, what God desires to have in us. And I dare even say that the physical relationship of, with, between men and women also exemplifies an aspect of relationship that God desires to have in us. God made Eve, amen, in order to be a reflection to Adam of what Adam was to be to God. God desires to pour into man, to pour into his creation. Man is designed to pour into a woman. We're, we're designed that way emotionally. We're designed that way physically. We're designed that way spiritually. And that was the intent by which God made Eve so that Adam would have something to pour into. Amen? Oh, y'all going to be with me. Hang in there. We'll, we'll get it right. Amen? That It's a natural relationship designed that way. In the book of Ephesians, it talks about the relationship aspect. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 21 through 33. I'm not going to read the whole thing for you right now, but let me describe a little bit of it to you. I do want to read this first verse because it's important. Many times people take this verse of Scripture and they take it way, uh, they, they take it a place because they want to, they, they trying to get a point across, amen, which is not, amen, necessarily what this is intended. In fact, I want you to understand that this passage, some of this, some people will use this passage to try and show a dominance of man over woman. It's not intended to be a dominance. In fact, God never intended there to be a dominant relationship between male and female. I might go there in just a moment, but let me let me explain this. Amen. In fact, in verse 21, you see right at the beginning, he makes it clear what the intent here. He says in verse 21, submitting yourselves one to another in fear, in the fear of God. Men and women, listen, both have to learn how to submit to each other. That doesn't sound like dominance to me. That sounds like a we got to work together Amen. mindset to me. We got to learn how to work together. I want you to understand that male and female were intentionally designed with differences. But just like last week when we talked about better together, those differences are designed to work together. Amen. They're different. But when you put them together, you make something better than you do as individuals. Holistically, we are better together than we are as individuals. That doesn't mean, amen, that you can't, amen, be successful, have a happy life, amen, be satisfied, amen, as an individual. But you are intended to be connected. I want you to remember that this is the design that God shows you to show you how he wants to be connected to you. 
So your ultimate satisfaction, your ultimate place is going to be in co being connected to God in the way that he intended or showed for men to be connected to women. Are you still with me? He describes first about the woman here. He, to, he says, amen, in this aspect of woman, first of all, that wives should love and submit to their husbands. Amen. They are submitting, amen, because of love, not because of obligation. Not because they're in jail. Nobody's trying to trap you. You're not, aha, you're married now. <laughs> it's not about that. Keep in mind, this is the relationship that God intends. God does not entrap man. He does not force you to serve him. He does not make you love him. But the love that we have for God is because we choose, we desire to love him because we recognize his love for us. Wives are to submit to their husband from an aspect of love because of the love, amen, that is reflected to her. And if you truly love a wife, she'll love you, amen. Come on, man, they just... Throw that out there. Amen. I see some men missing today. Well, y'all got to get the CD or something. Amen. But women, a wife loves and submits to a husband from that aspect of love. Amen. Men, amen. And by the way, the aspect of dominance, amen, came, amen, because of the curse of sin. All the things that we see, right? It's in Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. Amen. It, that's where we women were cursed. Amen. In order, amen, to to be servant to servient to their husbands because of sin, because of the place that Eve took in her position. Amen. Of speaking, amen, to the devil the way that she did, and then bringing that. That's where the curse came. And read it for yourself, Genesis three sixteen. Amen. But that was not the intention of God. That was the effect of sin. What God intended was a relationship effective because of the love that a woman would serve, serve unto her husband and the mutuality of her husband's love, amen, for her. It says, husbands, love your wife as you love your own body as Christ loved the church. Amen. He says, no man, amen, would just tear up his own body. We take care of our own bodies. We groom our own bodies. We dress our own bodies. If we feel sick. <laughs> we go to the doctor. We're going to take a pill. Amen. We're going to get it right. Amen. We take care of ourselves. We should love your wife as you love yourself. In fact, to the point, if you think that she's sick, if you think there's something wrong, if you think there's something, amen, we are to surrender, amen, to taking care of her like we would take care of ourselves. Well, you'd be all right. You just go and sit down and <laughs> rest. You'd be all right. Come on. <laughs> love your wife as you love yourself. It's because of that mutuality of love. Listen, I tell people all the time in counseling, amen, a one-sided relationship will never work. You can love somebody all you want. If they don't love you back, it's not going to work. Amen. You can want to get a relationship right all you want, but you cannot fix a relationship by yourself. If it is not mutual, if both sides are not committed, it's not going to work. The relationship God, that God describes to us is a mutual relationship. As we love him, he loves us. And guess what? God never stops loving. So if it's not working right, it's because we've become distracted. We've gone on our own way. We have not been consistent. We have decided to do our own thing. When we stray away from God, that's what destroys the relationship. Amen. In your relationship of husband and wife, as long as both sides are loving each other and committed to each other, that relationship grows stronger and stronger. And yes, there are differences between you, but you learn how to build those differences together and become stronger because of it. Can you imagine how much stronger we are because we are related to God? How much more power you all of a sudden get because of your relationship, your link to God? When you've got God on your side, when God is your husband, hmm. don't mess with me. Don't, don't, don't mess with me. You don't know who's on my side. As long as we are connected with God, amen, he is fending for you, fighting for you. Can you imagine if God loves you like he loves himself? What are they going to do to you, amen, when they're messing with God? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
So the relationship, amen, is this relationship of them coming together. God tells the husband, take care of her, remembering that she came out of you. She came out of your rib. She's a part of you. That's why you need to take care of her like you take care of yourself, because that is part of you. And you better take care of it, amen, and let it become. The man's responsibility is to make the woman the best that she will ever be. She ought to look more beautiful than she's ever looked. She ought to have a more positive attitude than she's ever had. She ought to be more confident, more comfortable than she's ever been because he's pouring into her, amen, pouring into her identity, pouring into her confidence, pouring into her strength, pouring into her power, pouring into her victory. There's a pouring that happens from the man into the woman to make that woman greater than what she is. I want you to understand that that's what God wants to do to you. He wants to pour into you to give you confidence, pour into you to give you strength, pour into you to make you greater than you could ever be by yourself. Yes, you can stand by yourself, but let God pour into you and see what happens to you. Mm, see how your attitude perks up. See how your confidence perks up. Amen. No weapon formed against me shall prosper because God is on my side. Nobody can talk about me. Amen. Because my God knows exactly what they're saying. Even before they said it, God is in control and he's pouring into me to make me greater than I could ever be by myself.